bonus video for you here. My regular video is going to come out on Monday, but I wanted to get this to you before the weekend because if you're like me, you are super excited about the lunar eclipse that's coming up this September 27th, 2015. But there's way more to do than just watch the spectacle of the eclipse. With just a little bit of effort, you can figure out the distance from the Earth to the Moon. And the only equation you actually need to know is the relationship between the circumference of a circle and the radius of a circle. Normally it's written that the circumference, c, is equal to 2 pi times the radius. We're going to want to rearrange it slightly, but it's the same math. All you have to do is move the 2 pi over to this side and you get the circumference divided by 2 pi is equal to the radius. With just this equation and a little bit of basic understanding about speeds, you can figure out how far away the moon is. But before I get into all of the math, let's review the geometry of the situation. Let's say this is the Earth, this is the moon, and this is the sun. As the Earth goes around the Sun, the Moon goes around the Earth. Now, when an eclipse when an eclipse is happening, that's when the Moon happens to be passing into the shadow of the Earth. Now, most of the time you don't see this because the Moon is either below or above the ecliptic. But when everything lines up just right, the Moon will fall into the shadow of the Earth. Now, for our purposes, we're going to assume that the shadow of the Earth cuts out a perfect rectangle in space. Now, in actuality, it does taper off to a triangle, but for this approximation, you can get really rather close, just assuming that it's a perfect rectangle that just draws out into space, and that the amount of time it takes for the moon to travel through that shadow is the amount of time that to cross the diameter of the Earth. This doesn't always work out perfectly because usually the moon doesn't actually travel dead through the middle during an eclipse. Usually it's a little bit low or a little bit high. So in addition to needing to record the time it takes for the moon to travel from one side to the other, that is the time is in the shadow, you also need to actually take some pictures so that you can figure out how low or high the moon is as it cuts across. During the lunar eclipse you're going to need to record it somehow. You can probably get away with just taking pictures about every 10 minutes or so. I, on the other hand, took my telescope that I had, yanked out the eyepiece, and just placed a piece of paper where the eyepiece would normally go, and traced the shape of the moon as it was projected directly onto the paper. I'm going to walk you through some data that I actually recorded on April 4th, 2015, and this is the result that I came up with. I actually made it into a little GIF animation. That aside, with this data, I'm able to figure out the next steps. After I got my drawings um, scanned in here, now you can do this with your photograph or whatever, you can use whatever graphics program, and scaled the size of the paintbrush tool so that it matched the size of moon here. And I got about um, 70 pixels for the moon, so I'm just gonna put down a dot for that. There's my moon dot. Then we do the same thing, but we try to get the right size for the curve of the cutout. And see, I'm just hovering here to try and get it to fit. That's about 200. There is my uh, earth dot. I know the uh, earth dot is about 200 pixels here. And the moon dot is about 70 pixels. And I also know that judging from my sketches here, I started when the moon was just barely coming through here. And it stopped when the moon was uh, dead center in the middle of the Earth. It was before it started to peek out the other side. Then I want to make some lines to show the center of the Earth line and the center of the moon line. That's the center of the Earth. That's the center of the moon. And so when the moon made it exactly there, that this is how far it traveled from here to here. So I just need to make one more little circle shape here, and that's about 100, uh, between 100 and 125. Let's try 110. Yeah, that looks about right. So there's my 110 uh, pixel wide dot. Now with these values, all I have to do is figure out how many kilometers are in a pixel. But what if you don't have a graphics program to do this sort of a thing with the brush? You can still figure out pretty much the same thing, but you do need a compass. Print out a picture of the moon that you took. You will need to have one from the beginning and one from the end to be able to tell the distance that the moon had covered. Begin by trying to uh, 
figure out the right radius of the shadow by lining up your compass on the shadow and trying to get it to uh, line up. Now you will need to uh, fiddle around with it just a little bit. This is going to make it look a lot easier than it actually is. Be advised that I did have to do this several different times before I got the hang of it. If you print out a few of them and make some comparisons, you should be able to draw the circle that would be the shadow of the earth and go ahead and mark the center point there. Okay, so this distance is uh, the radius of the earth. Go ahead and do the same game for the moon's radius, which is a little bit easier because you can see how it how how big it is. And so this distance from here to here, that's the radius of the moon. Go ahead and measure that. Two, two and a quarter, six, let's say 6.5 centimeters. Now this way is a little bit slower, but you will end up with pretty much the same math. Now I'm going to talk about it in terms of pixels, but you can do this way if these are the tools that you have. Now that I know how big all of these things are in pixels, I need to have some sort of way of converting from pixels into kilometers. For the radius of the Earth, I know that it's 100 pixels across. Half the diameter, that's the 200 pixels of, of the brush, is 100 pixels. Take 40,000, that's, uh, that's the rough circumference of the Earth, and divide it by 2 pi, multiply it by something, and set that all equal to 100. That's the 100 pixels. So what that means is the radius of the Earth, that's this, this circumference divided by 2 pi means the radius, times something is equal to the radius in pixels. That something is going to be the conversion factor. So what I want to do is I want to figure out the something so that I can convert then from the pixels of the 110 pixels that the moon traveled to that in kilometers. A little bit of algebra and rearranging, I figure out that x equals pi divided by 200. That's the number you, you divide the number of pixels by to get the number of kilometers. So in this case, I have 100 pixels divided by pi over 200. The 200 moves up, makes this number rather large, and I end up with 7,002 kilometers. So during the time period that I was recording, the moon moved 7,002 kilometers. What about that time frame? Whenever I drew a little sketch, I notated the time. This can happen automatically in terms of the timestamp on the photograph if you're just taking it with a camera. In any case, I figured out that it was an hour and 56 minutes or 116 minutes long for the moon to move from here to exactly halfway when dawn started. Converting 116 minutes into seconds, that means multiplying it by 60, I get 6,960 seconds. The moon is moving 7,002 kilometers in 6,960 seconds. That means the moon is moving about 1.006 kilometers every second. Now this is pretty good. The moon actually moves about 1.02 kilometers every second. That's the accepted value. What does the speed of the moon have to do with how far away it is? Well, you could get into the gravity of it, but really all you need to figure out is if you know how long it takes for the moon to go around the Earth and how fast it's moving, you can figure out the distance that it travels in that time, and that's the circumference. The moon goes through its lunar cycle about once every 28 days. It's actually 27.3 days. And what the lunar cycle is, is how long it takes for the moon to go around the Earth. This cycle is what takes 27.3 days, a little, a little less than 28 days. If we know how long it takes to go around and how fast it's moving, that gives us how far it's gone. And since we know the relationship between the circumference and the radius of a thing, we can figure out the distance from the Earth to the moon. We have that 1.006 kilometers per second times the 27.3 days it takes for the moon to go around the Earth times the 24 hours in a day times 60 minutes in an hour times 60 seconds in a minute. This all adds up to a big number. Then we take all of this and divide it again by 2 pi. Remember, this chunk on the top is the circumference. If we divide it by 2 pi, that gives us the radius. The radius, that's the distance from the Earth to the moon. In this case, I ended up with 377,654 kilometers. That's pretty good. The average difference is 406,437 kilometers, but the number that I came up with is still bigger than the closest approach that the moon makes to the Earth. As you might have heard, this lunar eclipse is a supermoon. That means that the moon is slightly closer to the Earth, not by much, honestly, 
but is slightly closer to the Earth. That means that during the lunar eclipse, it'll actually be closer than the number that I came up with. But don't be fooled by how I've been holding these things. If I was actually going to hold these at the correct distance, I would have to put the Earth on the floor and hold the moon up above my head. Now, I'm a little bit under six feet tall, so you can get a pretty good sense of the normal distance. And during a super moon, it's only about that much closer. But this also gives you a sense that this closest approach is smaller than the number that I got. So within a very small error, I was able to figure out the distance from the Earth to the Moon back in April. But I'm going to try it again this September. I know this is a little bit math heavy, but it really gives you a wonderful grasp about how mathematics can place where you are in the relation to objects in space. I really hope that you try this experiment, and if you do, please leave the distance you get below. But of course, you don't have to take my word for it, because you can science it.